Good day, viewers. This video will demonstrate how to make radiographs of the cervical spine in the erect position. The first projection I will demonstrate is a lateral view. Rotate the patient so that the left shoulder is against the bucky. Align the mid-coronal plane with the midline of the IR. Direct the CR at C4 and perpendicular to the IR. Ask the patient to protract the chin to prevent superimposition of the mandible on the upper vertebrae. Use an 8x10 lengthwise cassette. A grid is optional because of the air gap. Collimate to include 1 to 2 inches above the EAM or external audiomeatus, the soft tissue margins of the neck, and the first two or three thoracic vertebrae. Expose after full expiration for maximum shoulder depression. The anatomy demonstrated here are the vertebral bodies of C1 through C7, the intervertebral joint spaces, spinous processes, zygopophyseal joints, articular pillars, and sometimes the dens. For obliques, RAO and LAO are preferred because it reduces thyroid doses. But for demonstrative purposes, I show one of each, an LPO and an RAO, to include the differences between the two views. The positioning for both are generally the same. Both require the body and head to be at a 45 degree angle from the IR. The mid-sagittal plane is aligned with the center line of the IR. Protract chin slightly to prevent superimposition of the mandible and vertebrae without superimposing the base of the skull over C1. If superimposition occurs, the head can be turned laterally. A posterior oblique requires the CR to be angled cephalically at 15 degrees, whereas an anterior oblique requires a caudal angle of 15 degrees. Both are directed at C4. A grid is also optional because of the air gap between the patient and the IR. Collimate both to include the EAM, the soft tissue margins of the neck, and the T2-T3 joint. Both right and left obliques should be taken for comparison. The intervertebral foramina, the vertebral disc spaces, should be open and uniform while the pedicles are in full profile. Next is the axial AP view. Have the patient stand in front of the bucky with his or her back against it and chin raised enough so that the line from the lower margin of the upper incisors and the mastoid tips are perpendicular to the IR. Align the mid-sagittal plane with the center line of the IR. With a 15 to 20 degree cephalic angle, aim the CR at the level of C4. The line from the tip of the mandible to the mastoid tips should be parallel to the CR. Ensure no rotation. Using an 8x10 cassette with a grid, collimate to include 1 to 2 inches above the EAM, the soft tissue margins of the neck, and the first two or three thoracic vertebrae. Expose while respiration is suspended. The anatomy demonstrated in an AP axial film includes C3 through T3, the spaces between pedicles, the intervertebral disc spaces, maybe the odontoid process. To visualize C1 and C2, most times an AP open mouth projection is required. As with most other cervical positions, align the patient's mid-sagittal plane with the midline of the IR. Ensure no rotation and that when the mouth is open, a line from the lower margin of the upper incisors to the mastoid tips is perpendicular to the IR. The CR should also be perpendicular to the IR and directed at the center of the mouth when it is wide open. Collimate tightly to the outer four sides of the mouth using an 8x10 cassette with a grid. Suspend, respiration, and expose. The odontoid process, vertebral body of C2, lateral masses of C1, and the open space of the atlantoaxial joints are the anatomy demonstrated. Thank you for watching.